لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة The truth behind the fall of Regarding this verse, scholars have mentioned that the meaning is we will seize Abu Jahl by his forelock and drag him into hell on the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the forelock of Abu Jahl as lying and sinful. Now the question that is asked is why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not describe any other part of Abu Jahl's body as lying and sinful? The verse clearly indicates that the forelock, which is the upper part of the forehead, is responsible for traits such as truthfulness and lying. For many years, they didn't know what this part of the brain did. So, uh, this had little to do with the control of the functions of the body. Now, uh, the frontal lobes, uh, here in the last 50 years, we've learned that these frontal lobes are concerned with some of the highest mental functions of animals and humans. And we've done various uh, studies which uh, show that uh, they are concerned with these highest levels uh, of our thinking. The human brain is not only one of the most important organs in the human body, it is also the most complex. The brain is divided into four major sections known as lobes. The frontal lobe, the occipital lobe, the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe have different locations and functions that support the response and actions of the human body. The frontal lobe has many functions, most which center on regulating social behavior. The function of the frontal lobe involves the ability to recognize future consequences resulting from current actions. The choice between good and bad actions or better and best, the override and suppression of socially unacceptable responses, and the determination of similarities and differences between things or events. When someone lies, brain cells in the prefrontal cortex, the planning executive of the brain, works harder than when we tell the truth. Pathological liars have shown to have more white wiring matter and less grey matter in the prefrontal cortex of the brain than other people. Studies conducted with an EEG show that patients and animals that are exposed to damage of the frontal lobe hemispheres suffer from mental deficiency. Any damage to the frontal lobe changes the natural behaviour of the affected person. In some cases, this could lead to criminal behaviour and a drastic fall in moral standards. For years, a tumor was growing inside Jerry's brain, slowly pushing against his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that affects our personality and how we act. Becky says she didn't even recognize the man she married. Do you want the Cavenders too? No, honey, thank you. Okay. Becky and Jerry Harper were on the verge of divorce after 18 years of marriage. One day, Jerry realized something wasn't right. I mean, I have never laid a hand on her, and one time I raised my hand at her, and that was not you. No, that wasn't me. Here, what you see is this area of whiteness. Until one day when Jerry collapsed and doctors found out he had a non-cancerous brain tumor the size of a plum pressing against his frontal lobe. Over the last decade, scientists have used functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, to more accurately locate regions of the brain that changes when a person lies. This technique measures changes in blood flow in the brain, a reflection of neural activity, while people answer questions while inside a scanner. The resulting images pinpoint brain activity in a specific region during the lie and truth phases of the deception paradigms. Although several brain areas appear to play a role in deception, the most consistent findings across multiple fMRI studies is that the activity in the prefrontal cortex increases when people lie. The prefrontal cortex situated just behind the forehead is a collection of regions responsible for executive control, the ability to regulate thoughts or actions to achieve goals. So the uh, Cran has described the relationship between the frontal lobes of the brain and the ethical behavior of human beings. And uh, there is a surah, it reads, Do you see one who forbids the servant of ours, God, when he turns to pray? Do you see if he who prays follows the guidance and enjoins righteousness? 
Do you see if he obstructs, rejects truth, and turns away? Does he not know that God sees? Let him beware. If he desists not, we, that is God, will punish him upon his forehead. A lying, sinful forehead. And the word used in the last two verses, uh, which means the forehead, the forehead is in this statement, uh, we believe refers to the frontal lobes of the brain. And I was asked, how could the, the forehead have anything to do with uh, sinning and with uh, uh, lying and so on? And I suggested that it was related to this higher function. So that the act of lying is initiated by the mental activities in the frontal lobes. And its instructions are then carried out by uh, other parts of the, the brain which affect the speech organs so that they can uh, bring about these uh, unlawful acts and so on. So that we believe then that sins are planned in the frontal lobes before they're carried out by the eyes, the hands, and sexual organs. The scientists mentioned that it was only 50 years ago that we discovered that this is the part of the body that is responsible for decision making. But this fact was clearly indicated in the Quran 1,500 years ago. Only those who deny the truth can deny the fact that the Quran is indeed the word of God, the Creator. God orders Muslims to perform sujud, that is, place your foreheads on the ground, uh, as stated in the continuance of the Quranic verses. Then let him call his associates. We will call on the angels of punishment. Then follow not him, but prostrate yourselves and draw nearer to us, that is God. This order to perform sujud means we should place the center of our will and decision-making processes on the ground to show absolute submission to God. <laughs> اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان